Hey, what's going on guys? Mike here. Today we are talking all about algae. I want to go over three or maybe four different methods that I like to use to try and get rid of algae and then prevent it because as you can tell, we do have a little bit of an algae issue here in the bonsai tree tank. But first, we have a quick PSA. Fluval is running a contest and I'm a little late to the game here, so chances are you guys have already seen this contest, but just in case you haven't, if you wanna be entered in for a chance to win up to $2,500 worth of Fluval gear, not just their signature bug bites fish food that you see in front of me, all you have to do is make a short, like 30 second video uh, showing off you feeding your fish some bug bites and or explaining why you think you deserve to win the contest. And then all you have to do is upload that with hashtag Fluval Bug Bites to any of Fluval's social media platforms. You can also get your hands on some free bug bite samples if you send me an email. The first 100 people to do so will get a free sample of whatever style of bug bites you want. So all the information is down in the description. Check it out. And let's go ahead and get into today's video. Algae, 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 what are we gonna do with you? I mean, it's a problem that happens to all of us, okay? Every single tank you set up, 99% of the time, you're gonna have at least one run-in or one issue with algae. And, you know, it's just really important, you know, if you're new to fish keeping, it can be a huge deterrent. It can be something that makes you shut down your tank and just give up, you know? Uh, and even if you're somebody like me who's had a ton of fish tanks and been, has been doing this for a long time, it's still, it's still a deterrent for me, you know? It still makes me think of the same things, like, oh my gosh, why am I doing this? This is so annoying, but the thing, the big difference is, is that I have, you know, multiple methods right, you know, in the back of my mind that I can go to, that I can pull from to help solve the problem. And really just the number one thing, guys, when it comes to algae is the sooner you deal with it, the sooner you can get past it and the easier it's going to be because if you put it off for a week or two and just say, eh, you know, I got this problem, maybe it'll fix itself. Chances are it's just going to get 10 times worse and it's going to be 10 times harder to resolve. So what you want to do is you want to act fast. Let's go ahead and let's pretend like I'm acting fast. Okay. I've been busy. I'm like you guys, like, uh, you know, uh, I'm working, I got my head down and all of a sudden I lift my head up, it's you know two weeks later and then I, you know, I have this to deal with. So, but let's go through what are the top like three or four different methods or things that I like to do to help solve this type of problem. The first thing that I do, and this is gonna sound really silly and really obvious, is get in and do physical removal, okay? And, it, you know, depending on the type of algae, this can either be really easy or it can be really difficult. You know, in this case, the type of algae we have in here, this fuzzy stuff is I kind of, you know, it's not the easiest stuff to remove, but it's also not like blackbeard algae where that's, you know, pretty much really, really tough and almost impossible to physically remove all of it. This stuff, I'm not going to be able to get all of it either, but you know, I am going to be able to go through and sort of collect it on my fingers and hopefully get, you know, a, uh, you know, a decent percentage of it out. It's loosely attached to all these plants. So another way that I could do this, and this will tie in with another one of the methods for getting rid of an algae problem, um, is to go through with my hand, break it up off of the plants because it's easy to do so, and then suck it up with our, our siphon. You know what? I got, I got an idea. Hold on. I'll be right back. Okay. This is totally like maybe a really dumb experiment, but we got the fork. We're gonna try and spaghetti this, spaghetti this stuff. Let's see if it'll work, I don't know. It is kind of working. <laughs> I thought I, I thought I might give it a shot. I didn't think it would work though, oh I lost it. I don't know guys, this might be, this might be algae hacks. Let's see if it, I just don't wanna tangle up the Glosso, you know? That's not, that's not bad. Let's see. Okay, let's pull this out here. Okay, well, fork might be the answer for uh, for string algae, guys. You saw it here first. So check out the fork on the hair grass. If you guys, like the Glosso is, is kind of tough, you know, because you get up underneath leaves and then you can pull up the plant which doesn't make it really good but check this out on the hair grass that we have i know a lot of you guys have hair grass hair grass does have an issue with like string algae and stuff like this check this out 
see if we can get a focus here. Go in here and just pull that stuff out. Like, that's crazy. That's working so good. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I mean, it's getting everything up out of here and it works way better than, you know, the alternative. Uh, I just don't want to let that float away. The alternative was coming in here with my fingers and trying to pick it out, which is really ineffective. And even just by, you know, blowing it back and forth, it doesn't pull everything up out. So that fork is, that fork's my new best friend. We managed to get, you know, a pretty good amount of the algae out of the tank, I'd say, you know, 50%, something like that. There's a lot of it kicking up around here. We're gonna help get that out with a water change here in a second, but you can see the damage that we did with the fork. I mean, that's a pretty good job. I'm really, I'm really impressed with the fork. I'm not talking about every method there is to get rid of algae or prevent it. You know, there's bleach, hydrogen peroxide, those kind of things. A lot easier to do if you can physically remove things from the tank that have your plants or maybe they don't even have plants on them, pieces of wood. Um, but in this case, you know, the algae is on the plants and we can't remove these plants so we have to deal with everything in tank. So that's sort of what, uh, what methods I'm going to be going over today. So we got our physical removal out of the way. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do water changes, okay? So again, this is a tank that I sort of put on the back shelf and didn't keep up with my regular water changes. That's another reason why your tank might get some algae. And so what we're gonna do now is basically like a 200% water change. I mean, not really, but you know, like an 80% water change. And I'm probably gonna be doing that like every three days. You know, I mean, it's just, it's sort of a guesstimate. Whereas, you know, before I was trying to do, uh, you know, a 50% water change every week. Now I'm gonna up that to 80% and do it every three days. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to deplete the aquarium of any excess nutrients. And, you know, because I have algae, I'm making the assumption that I do have excess nutrients and that those are causing part of the problem. So I am assuming some things and I'm, you know, taking some corrective action that may or may not be directly beneficial in fixing the problem, but you can never hurt by doing big water changes and doing them frequently, guys. It's it's a tried and true method, and we're gonna include that in, you know, with, with the plan of attack today. So we got physical removal, now we're doing big water change here, and while I'm doing that water change, I'm going through and I'm kicking up more of the fuzz algae, you know, getting it off of the Anubias and around the tree. I'm also going through the Glosso carpet with my hands and trying to kick up more of that stuff, and I'm just gonna suck it directly out. So we're still doing physical removal here, as well as, you know, giving the aquarium a breath of fresh air. We're opening up the window in a stuffy room, I guess, if you wanna use that as a, as a metaphor for what we're doing with a big water change. I think I did a pretty good job. The tank is filling back up now. Ended up doing about 100% water change when it was all said and done. Uh, while I was doing that, I went through, used my handy dandy mag float to clean the glass. Didn't have a lot of spot algae or anything on the front, but I did have some on the back. If you guys are new to fish keeping and you don't know about mag floats, I mean, it's, it's a must have thing. So I'll put a link for it down in the description. Uh, you guys, I mean, you know, th there's so many things with algae. Let's talk about the next two things that we're gonna do. So first off, lighting. Lighting is one of those things where I think most people assume that lighting is always the cause of algae. Like, you know, you have too much light going into your tank, you're causing algae to grow. That's not untrue but there's just so many factors at play here. But we are going to be modifying the light cycle on the tank. Right now I've been running it for about eight hours a day on the max setting here on the Phoenix, which puts out a decent amount of par, especially in a tank that's this shallow. And so, you know, making tweaks to the lighting, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna reduce the overall photo period down to five hours, I think. So from eight to five, cut it down a little bit. And then I might also reduce the intensity slightly. So I'm gonna get in on my Phoenix and I'm gonna make like a custom set here. Um, 
like I said, we've been using Max, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get in here and play with the white, red, and blue and sort of tone it down a little bit just for, you know, a few weeks to see how things go. Uh, lighting is one of those things where I think it's really easy to put too much light into your aquarium. And so, you know, it, it's just one of those things where if you make a change, you have to kind of let it be because it's gonna, you know, shock the system slightly. The plants are gonna, you know, behave differently if you do too drastic of a change. So we don't wanna change things too much because again, we want these plants to be thriving. That's another way to help reduce algae is by having a really healthy planted tank where the plants are actively growing. I've never been a fan of doing blackouts on my planted tanks for a couple different reasons. Um, again, a blackout is where you turn the light off for like an entire week and that is supposed to help stop algae from growing and of course kill it. That does work and you can get away with it in a planted tank, but because because our plants need light to grow and growing plants can help reduce the algae, you know, we don't want to do that, especially with a high-tech plant like this gloss. So I have a feeling that it would just completely melt away if we turn the lights off for an extended period of time. But if you don't have a planted tank, turning the lights out for, you know, a week at a time, that can work. It is going to make your fish kind of act a little strange. They, they might not like it, but you know, if you have a really bad problem, that, that can help. Before I talk about the last major thing I'm gonna be doing to this aquarium to help prevent the algae, I need to touch on something else. So I, you know, I set out to make this video like three or four tips or whatever for eliminating and keeping algae away, but it's turned into like five or six or seven or who knows. Um, but at least that way, you know, maybe you guys get some more information, right? So the other thing is fish load and the amount of food that you put into your aquarium because that has a huge influence on algae in the aquarium. In this tank, we don't have a high fish load. We only have like 25 cardinal tetras in this 33 gallon. And my idea was to like triple that number, okay? Or at least double it. I wanted a lot of fish in here, but the more fish you have in a volume of water, the more food you need to feed, right? And so the more waste there is, the more filtration you need to have to uh, combat that waste, but it's super, super easy to overfeed a tank. And so when you put food into the tank, the fish eat it, they themselves produce waste, but then any food that doesn't get consumed just falls to the bottom and ends up adding to the carbon pool and thus the nutrient pool in the tank, which as we all know, can be a culprit of why we have algae. So a great way to work on this issue is to limit the amount of food that you put into your aquarium, regardless of how many fish you have. So uh, up to this point, I think I've been feeding close to like every day and I haven't really been watching to make sure all of my fish consume that food. So chances are, you know, a good portion of the food that I put in the tank does fall to the bottom of the tank and adds to that nutrient pool. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna change up my feeding and go to like every other day and I'm gonna be really mindful of the amount that I put in. So when I sprinkle food into the tank, I'm gonna watch my fish eat the food and I'm not gonna feed them any more than I think they need. So I'm not gonna be putting in a ton of food and you know seeing a bunch of it fall to the bottom. That's the opposite of what I want. And so just by kind of putting them on a diet, it should in turn put the algae on a diet and hopefully reverse some of the issues that we're having. The fish are really liking the bug bites. I had heard of this stuff like several months ago, but I'd never gotten my hands on any. Uh, Corey was talking about it. He was really liking, you know, feeding it to his fish. And uh, I'm glad to get my hands on some. You know, the fish are liking it. It's insect larvae based, which is really cool. You know, fish in the wild, they eat insects for the most part. And it's supposed to be super palatable to them. And they're just supposed to absolutely love it. And so far, so good. So go check out bug bites, guys. I don't know. It might be my my new main food that I feed all of my fish. So the last thing we're gonna be doing to this aquarium to help get rid of the rest of the algae, because you can see, you know, we didn't get quite all of it, that was to be expected, um, but then also to prevent it from coming back with the other changes that we made, is we're gonna be adding in two new organisms to this system. Some algae eaters that I think are gonna make a huge difference in this tank, help balance it out, and prevent that algae from coming back. But we need to wait until tomorrow because I'm all out of time for today. So I'll pick it back up with you guys in a little bit. Fast forward to the next day, guys. We are back at the tank. Everything is looking pretty good post all the maintenance we did yesterday. And here we have 
some fish, okay? So I just got back from the fish store and we have some Siamese algae eaters. We got five of those guys really great at eating algae. I mean, their name implies exactly what they do. And then we also have a reticulated Siamese algae eater, which is like the god tier of algae eaters, okay? So they're even better than these guys. We only got one, but uh, you know, we'll be adding to that pool probably over the next few weeks. I don't wanna put too many in here because I also wanna add something that I wasn't able to get my hands on, which are a mono shrimp. Unfortunately, I don't have them today, but I called up my friends at Flip Aquatics. You guys probably follow that channel as well. Just in case you don't, I'll put a link to their channel down in the description, as well as a link to their website. They sell some of the best shrimp online, guys. They're sending me literally an airdrop of a mono shrimp here in the next week. So as soon as we get those, we'll do like an unboxing and we'll check those out and we'll add them to the tank, as well as check on the progress of the 33 bonsai tank to see how we're doing with the algae issue and we'll talk more about these fish as well as those shrimp because they are super super handy to have and i think that most everybody who has a planted tank should keep at least one of these type of things either these fish or a mono shrimp or both so when we get there i'll make a video for you guys we'll touch base on everything else just remember that there is a lot of different ways to get rid of and prevent algae in the aquarium i just went over a few of them today but if you guys like this video, I can follow up with another one where we talk about some other methods to help get rid of this stuff. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Be sure to subscribe if you're new, like the video if you like the tank and what we're doing here, and we'll touch base next week with an update on how things are going in this tank. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.